Hello, everybody, and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where you boys, we always got something to say about the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog. And I'm your host, Adam Peddle. And today, guys, we got to talk about the recent comment made by Vladimir Guerrero Jr., where he said he wanted to be a Blue Jay for the rest of his career. However, the Blue Jays, they haven't made a single contract offer. We're going to get into all the details and more. Before we do, guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Blue Jays Today. I mean, when I first heard about Vladimir Guerrero Jr. wanting to be the Blue Jay for the rest of his career, I freaked out. I heard you say it in your room today, and I literally jumped out of bed. I was like, what? Mm. What are you talking about? Because this, this is pretty good news that this guy wants to stay here, but it's not that easy. Well, it, it, you always like to hear that, that somebody wants to be part of your team, right? Like, Because clearly that's half the battle. I mean, in a relationship, <laughs> there are two sides, and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is one of them. But... You know, you have to broker a deal, and it can be very tough when you're dealing with these big players because you have to evaluate what they're worth. And specifically with Guerrero, that could be difficult. Let's flash over and just get word for word exactly what it was that he said. Shout out to Hector Gomez for uh, posting this out. He, he, Vladimir Guerrero says, I have no grudge against the Blue Jays despite the tense negotiations I had with the team mm -hmm. during the salary arbitration. So, check mark right there. Yeah. That's a good thing. Total sidebar. Love that because we were kind of worried about that. Mm -hmm. Good. Clearly, they are, they are all aligned and on the same page. He goes on to say, it's just business. I would like to be a Blue Jay for the rest of my career, but the team has not made me an offer. Now, this was all per Enrique Rojas. We just flashed him up here. He looks to be aligned with ESPN, Spanish-speaking guy, lots mm -hmm. of followers, so I would assume that he knows what it is that he's talking about. So, first things first, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. being or, or wanting to be a Blue Jay for the rest of his life, that's phenomenal. We can both agree on that. However, then it is that second part of that mm. comment right there. The Toronto Blue Jays have not made a contract offer yet. And the question that I think a lot of people on Twitter were asking was, uh, why not? Yeah, I mean, why not make a, any offer, right? But I think the Blue Jays are trying to manage the relationship right now. I think right now, based on how Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has been performing the last few years, it hasn't been very consistent, right? You could say, like, oh, now is a great time because when we look at his last three years and he's playing at his lowest, well, now is a great time to buy low on Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Send, give him an offer that's like $150 million over 10 years or mm -hmm. eight years or whatever it might be so we can lock him down. However, from Vladimir Guerrero Jr.'s point of view, I don't think he's done with his work yet. I think he's got more to prove and wants to get a better offer because if you're the Blue Jays and you offer him that, like, steal of a deal, you might offend him a little bit because he thinks he's worth more than that potentially well, that's the thing right you're always trying to walk this uh this kind of fine line where it's like well obviously we as the team we want to get a steal of a deal right now but at the same point you don't want to go too far in the other direction and then just have him laugh you out of the room and say yeah. no entirely right because then he's gonna start thinking i can't deal with these guys i yeah. can't negotiate with these dudes maybe i have a better chance at free agency mm -hmm. and that is something to know because vladimir Guerrero jr his free agency is within two years time guys as you know he just had the arbitration got paid 19.9 .9 million and in two years he will be a free agent now he did come out and say this saying that he has had the best off season mm -hmm. in several years but it's not going to be his best off season implying that he is going to continue this level of work and and hopefully the the season will reflect that level of work right. which will ultimately probably raise his price e exactly right and i think that's exactly what vladimir guerrero jr and the blue jays front office is waiting for you don't want to throw out the low ball offer offend him mm. make him look somewhere elsewhere where he could find that money i think the blue jays have been waiting for that first contract offer to give to him when he they feel and he feels mm -hmm. like he's shown exactly what his value is, which we could probably say at this point, we haven't seen the full Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Yeah, or, you know, we, we thought we saw we it, thought and, we and saw then it. we didn't really see it, and, and now we're not really sure right. what that full Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is, you know? Right. So I, I do think that this next year, and I've talked about this before, I've made videos about it, and I know that we've brought it up mm -hmm. on a few podcasts, but this next year is going to be crucial for him uh, in determining his future with this team because if he comes out and if he has a middling season and it kind of does the same stuff that he's done for the past few years, uh, that I don't think instills the Toronto Blue Jays with a whole lot of confidence to pay him the big bucks. And I think at that point, they're going to start looking at Bo Bichette mm -hmm. potentially being the top priority here. 
if on the other flip side of, of things, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. comes out and, and, and repeats that 2021 form or at least gets a little bit close to that, well, okay, now you are the top priority. Now we can confidently enter the room with a big freaking number. And would you feel comfortable as a fan knowing if he came out and did exactly what he did in 2021, would you feel confident dropping what he would probably want, which is upper 30s, $300 million? <laughs> I, I think it's a uh, well. First off, I, I gotta see it. I, I really gotta, gotta see, see it. it. Right, uh, right. But I, I think what instills me with confidence is, uh, and it's just it's all talk right now. It's all talk. But it does feel like this off season was a bit different for him, and it felt like he was he was starting to grow and starting to mature. And I mean that article is great. Shout out to Rob Longley who wrote yeah. it. Uh, but but he really goes deep into how baseball tests you, and it, you know you, you have to grow and you gotta mature, and and it is an endurance thing. And I think that. Guerrero, when he came into this season, he was 20 years old. He was always the, the best at any level of play that he'd ever been at. And he finally started to get challenged. And he did have that breakout year, but maybe he thought that it was it was going to come easy to him after that. Mm. And clearly, that's just not the case. I think that he is slowly maturing into that adult player that understands that every offseason is a new battle. It's a new challenge. Every season, every game is a new challenge. And if he does want to get paid the big bucks, and if he does want to be a star in this league, live up to his father's name and live up to the cover of the MLB, the show athlete, mm. then it will require that consistent level of work, which I'm hoping... He is realized. Yeah, I mean, after this arbitration hearing, you got a little taste of a team not really valuing you based on what you've been doing in the last few years, right? That yes. last year in 2023 just was not that good. And uh, I mean, you got two off, uh, two seasons left, excuse me, with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. So you could make an offer realistically at any point. You could do it right now. Mm -hmm. But like we're saying, you're probably going to have to wait until you see what happens this season. So with that being said, you're realistically looking at this offseason as a potential opportunity to yeah. make him that offer if he does bounce back. And then if you don't make that offer this offseason, you're basically waiting and seeing until he hits free agency. That's somewhere where me personally as a Blue Jay fan, I don't feel comfortable with unless mm -hmm. unless you have Vladdy that uh, the Vladdy that shows up this year is the Vladdy we saw last year. Now I feel like we're more comfortable waiting and seeing what he does in his final year. Yeah, I mean, well, they are playing a bit of a dangerous game in the sense that it, well, first off, you took him to arbitration, and apparently everything's <laughs> good about that. Apparently he's fine there, so yep. that that's good. Yeah. But first off, like again, why did you do that? I still don't understand. But uh, two. Yeah. If he does come out and if he does have that incredible season that we're all talking about, well, now you're going to have some people saying, and there's going to be some people in yeah. his ear as well, yeah. his agent and, and other people saying, hey, Guerrero, like, you got 12 months left on this contract. Right, right. You just put up a, a 900 OPS and 35 or 36 home runs. Maybe you just wait it out and, and see if you could get a Juan Soto level deal or something like that when you hit free agency. So they are running that risk, I think, if you're the Blue Jays. Right. But it might it's kind of necessary. See, I think uh, when we're talking Juan Soto level deal, we're talking five hundred million dollars. Okay, that was an exaggeration. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, an yeah. exaggeration. I don't think yeah, he's going to yeah. get that. But right. if he does put up MVP level years in the next back two back seasons, years, yeah. Well, now maybe you do want to do. Well, that. how much would you think he'd probably get? Because he'd probably get if you put up back to back MVP years like he did in twenty twenty one, rated OPS over. A thousand i think he's locking himself in close to 400 sure, sure right yeah. right so if you're the toronto blue jays he puts up an mvp season this year to what you're saying is the blue jays would have to offer him that close to 400 right away probably yeah probably yeah so yeah, it, it, that's it is a big thing it is a, a kind of a risky gamble and you have to hope that and they're in a favorable spot right now because he has come out and said i want to be a blue jay for life right and i think that is why this is so huge because if he came out and he and he just said yeah, like, uh, I don't really know what's going on. They haven't made me a contract <laughs> offer yet, and... Uh, That's what Boba said. My future's up in the air. Boba well, Shet was talking about that. He, he did. didn't say my future's up in the air, but he also said, like, yeah, they have maybe an offer. We're, we're chatting about it. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I, that's why I think that Guerrero is probably still yep. the priority one, even though they haven't made an offer He's yet. He's the only but, one that's really come out and said, I want to be a Blue Jay for life. I want to be right? a Jay for life, and I think that, that that's a great sign because now the Toronto Blue Jays, at least you can feel a little bit more confident that if he does have a great year and you make it to the next offseason, Season, well, you should still be his number one choice. So as long mm -hmm. as you don't laugh him out, or if he doesn't laugh you out of the room with a bad offer, you know, you're kind of in a favorable spot there. Right. And let me ask you a question because I know a lot of people are, are, are kind of talking on Twitter and talking on the internet about why they haven't made an offer. We kind of gave our explanation, mm -hmm. but do you think it's been a mistake to not even make one offer at I, this point? I think that it's, again, like I don't know all the in intricacies of, mm -hmm. of how these deals are worked and everything. Like we're not a fly in the wall in the room. Yeah. But, I think that it, it might be a little bit of a mistake for them 
not to indicate their interest. And he didn't. Yeah. Say, he didn't say that they didn't right. do that. Right. He right. just said that they haven't given an offer yet. Right. So right. I would. I would hope that they have been indicating their interest. But I also understand from a Blue Jay standpoint. One, I mean, Guerrero, as we've said, has been kind of a roller coaster, so that's a whole factor. Yeah. But two, and we haven't even brought this up yet, the team as a whole, you're still kind of figuring out, like, are we a squad that, you know, we, like, is this the core we want to rock with? Or, right. or is this team going to be competitive for a few years? Like, we're kind of waiting and seeing about this entire team. And, and I think that yeah. the, the management is kind of pigeonholed right now to wait and just see, okay, like, does ba uh, Bo and Vlad and this group, do they put up in 2024? Because yeah. if so, well, let's lock them all down. Whoa, time for your daily Betway breather. A quick reminder that the best place to bet is on Betway. Must be 19 years of age or older to play in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Please bet responsibly. Now, back to the content. But yeah. if not, well, then do you want to open the door for potentially trading them away later? Like, right. maybe they want to leave those options on the table. They might, right? And, and Vladdy feels like a good one to kind of lock down, at least for the immediate future. And this is no disrespect to Bo Bichette, but you do have a ton of middle infield, left side of the infield prospects coming up, right? That's true. So if, That's if true. Vladdy does break out... He kind of makes sense to be the one to, to lock down and be the kind of core of the team. Uh, I'm not saying they can't get both, but if they had to make a choice, then I guess that would that leaves them with at least options there for the future. And I think yeah. after this season, right, you're, you're talking about like locking down the core. I'm going to give a big shout to Danny Jansen too. Like if we do see a future winning with this squad, mm -hmm. you lock down Vladdy, you lock down Jansen because Jansen's a whole nother element. I've yeah. changed the subject completely. But yeah, that might be some next moves you see in, after this season if they do well. Totally, dude. I, my prediction for all of this is if the Toronto Blue Jays are competitive like we assume they're going to be if, if they're winning like high 80s 90 games if they make wild card again then I would predict that Bo either one of Bo Bichette or Vladimir Guerrero Jr. depending on the seasons that they have one of them will assuredly be uh, extended next offseason okay. that's the prediction yeah. if yeah. however let me put it this way yeah, yeah, yeah. if however the team sucks and if they win like 75 games just oh, like, yeah. like, like shit hits oh. the fan no, I don't no. think anyone's getting next day. I don't think no. anyone's getting paid next offseason. No, like my, my prediction would be, I think it goes down to, yes, the team as a whole. I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. I, but I think specifically with Vladimir Guerrero Jr., like we're saying, it is the performance aspect too. Because again, if, what if he puts up like a, an 820 with wow. 30 homers? That's where that's it gets really tricky. Because then it's like, okay, well now what? Do you offer 200 mil? But yeah. that's not how much he's worth. That He's still thinking he can do a lot better. So you almost need, if you're a fan out there for the Toronto Blue Jays, you almost need Vladdy to pop the hell off. Well, I'm cheering for that regardless. I'm, I am, yeah. yeah. But if you want me a Blue Jay for life, he's not only playing for this season. He's playing for your enjoyment for the next 10 years, yeah. potentially. Yeah, and I also just want a quick shout out to, to Vlad before we wrap this up, man. Yeah. I mean, like, the, I love the fact that he loves Toronto. Me right? too. Like, I love that fact. And a lot of players have come out and said, like, you know, that they have a bit of a bias towards Toronto until they get here and mm -hmm. they realize that it's like, hey, this city's awesome. I think that Guerrero always kind of knew because, again, his dad played for Montreal, so he's been around Canada this whole time, yeah. right? But the fact that, like, this kid kind of feels like he's, he's from here and, and he just loves the city of Toronto, he loves the Blue Jays, that just makes me love him yes. all that much more. Yes, and I hope you can get locked down for life, Vladdy. Mm. Guys, let us know in the comments down below what do you think about Vladdy and his future with the Toronto Blue Jays. Give your predictions on what you think he's going to go. He's going to be... Is it going to be a New York Met or a New York Yankee? No. Oh my God, no chance. That's terrible. Three dollars <laughs> to become a Patreon member. Shout out and thank you to all of our current Patreon members and our YouTube members too. All of you guys are freaking amazing. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, Go Jays Go! Jays go!